Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Viewpoint. It's the segment where we unpack the secrets of successful people and share some of their learnings with you. So you can take those learnings and what we hope is for you to implement them and become better business people. I'm your host, Jeremy Maggs. It's always a great pleasure to be with you. Today, our topic is fairly complex. We're going to be looking at pricing goods and services. And these are some of the questions that I think are pertinent to our discussion. Firstly, what price covers your input? The second thing is, what gives you a reasonable profit? We are, after all, in business to make a profit. What do your competitors charge? Critical that you scope your competitive set the whole time. And then is a large enough or a sizable enough customer base prepared to pay the price that you are going to offer. As I said to you, you need to focus here a little bit. It is quite a complex subject, but I think we have the perfect guest to answer those and other questions. Telefani Banks has been a pricing analyst in the retail sector for quite some time, and now he's uh, setting up his uh, own prices as an award-winning entrepreneur. So we're going to welcome the founder and chief executive officer of uh, the company Analytics Advertising. It's a young, vibrant, dynamic startup that is really making waves by using a technology to understand the importance of consumer insight and particularly to drive data-informed decisions. So Talafani, a very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us. You've had quite a journey from pricing in retail to building your own business. You're a numbers guy. Tell me about the journey very quickly. Um, I'm, I, was, I didn't think I'm a numbers person back in the days. I'm from Louis Trichet. Um, I think it was my escape because I've been uh, an entrepreneur since I was young. But I couldn't see my way out except education. So numbers was my escape. And then I went to University of Pretoria. And I thought people were smart. I just used to think people were smart. They are not as I thought, you know. And I was able to compete in top level. Then I went to work at Mass Smart, Peak and Pay, Grow Hair, finished at AutoZone, decided to start analytics advertising. Tell me about analytics advertising. Fundamentally, what is it? What do you do? Uh, analytics advertising is coming from a theory in economics, behavioral economics. It's, about, it's a study of human behavior and how they make purchasing patterns, how they reach maximum utility, all this. But in this case, it's in business. And how do you help a customer get what they, exactly what they want in the store? And how do you um, create that basket for them in the shelf kind of thing? And how do you understand that customer? How are they going to behave in the store? Also, it comes with creating systems and building something in such a way that it helps that retailer or that FMCG or that insurance able to understand their customer and what to give them. And also it helps the customer know what they want when they walk in. So it's just a relationship between using numbers. And a good business, you'll agree with me, is predicated on getting the price and the price points right. Yeah, why do you think, and we get, we're going to talk about yeah, yeah. The, dif the different pricing strategies in just a moment, but why do you think it is that entrepreneurs often get the pricing wrong, particularly at the very beginning? I think we have this imagination that uh, something will work just because you are thinking about it. You are not thinking value, you're thinking yourself. It's like, I hope this works, you know? And uh, because of that, you end up pricing something just because you feel like you are talented or you created something nice. But it's about the customer and it's about the market. Segment the customer um, and where they are. There are different types of customers. In my world, we understand budget customers, core customers, and upper core customers. But there's also different types of markets. Um, a customer can be looking for the same thing in a cheaper rate. So where can you segment your product? There's also product segmentation. This is where analytics is important. So there are different types of products. So you can segment them as a price fighter or as a A brand or as a premium product. So when you are pricing your product in the market, which level is it? Is it a price fighting? And if it's a price fighting, what market are you targeting? Is it a premium market or a budget customer? So in my world, if it's a price fighter, you're targeting a budget customer, and then you try and integrate that. So I think, I think that's where they get it wrong. And you've got to get that right at the get-go, right at the very beginning. Yeah, because then, People, your, your, how you introduce yourself is your perception. And if you are known for being expensive without providing value, or you are known for value but 
not really really uh, expensive that's a problem you know so you have to just get aligned but also you learn over time and get it right so now we're going to work our way through a number of different pricing strategies mm -hmm. let's start with something called value-based pricing which is based on perceived value that's where we also add value i was looking at something and i was like how do you quantify that because i'm a mathematician you can't tell me i oh, know this brand is now valuable i will ask you how did you do that so now there's this perception just because so many people knows it and you quantify it as more valuable brand um it is it is i i, I would say that there is um value in that but we should also look at the impact that the brand can bring when you value it at that segment. Also, you must try and bring some models that quantify value. Uh, value is one of the models that work for consulting firms. You want to have value in that boardroom because most of them, you don't have a product to show what you're doing. So uh, I like value add model for consulting. I would say it's for some more service based and it works for TV and artists and all that. A lot of entrepreneurs, of course, are not in the service or the professional services yeah. industry. They would be selling hard product. Right. This brings us to something called competitive pricing. Mm. And essentially, from what I understand, mm. it's keeping a very close eye on, the market. on what the guy around the corner is doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used to do at Pick and Pay and, and Macro. I worked at MassMart. So when I was, what I was doing at Pick and Pay, I was running the perishables category. Uh, my job is to help the buyer understand where the market is and help him cut the right, right price with that supplier. So if you are in a product-based business, you want to get the best price from your suppliers, the best way, from raw materials and production, a little bit of everything that is happening there where there's electricity and everything. So you can keep your pricing constant. And on, on top of that, you want to also not be very expensive because it's a very competitive market when you're dealing with product. Some guy can be producing the same quality as you and he can be beating you just because he's producing it at a better. But it's also there's a level of value that is aligned there because if your product is well known and it's priced at a certain price can be. But you can't undercut yourself to the point where you are impacting on profitability. You can. How does that work? Uh, you can operate in break even. Uh, just to, you buy time, you say, um, I know that I can, I'm not going to make profit, but if I can price a break even and I just survive for this time and I manage to catch this guy in this level, I will gain market share. The game in that field is about you having trust and people believing in what you're doing. Like, let's look at the retailers. You look at the Woolies, you look at the pick and pay, and the people walk in there because of the perception they have. When they walk in Woolies, perception is like it's healthy food. When you walk in ShopRite, it's you save. So you want to build that category of you save when you walk in the store, even when you know over time I might pick up my market share through different things. Now, Talafani, at some point uh, an entrepreneur is going to have a new product mm. that they want to bring to the market. And there's now a theory or a strategy where you can set the price high and then over time lower it um, as demand grows. And that's called price skimming. Mm. I Ex see. Explain that to us. Um, I look at that model as um, you, want to, you want to quantify the value of your product so you can segment yourself on a certain level. And it works because also in consulting, you, if, as soon as you start as a very minimum based company, you're saying you do this data analytics service for a telecommunication company, they'll look at you and think you don't know what you're doing. So you want to start at a value that is competitive even though you know the end goal is to come back and be competitive in the best way. The, other people quantify you the best way you can deliver your service through price. And that is very important. Uh, so a lot of guys in top level corporates, they will look at your price and see if they can work with you. And I think that's where that model would work. We're going to get to something called cost plus pricing in just a moment. But just to break away from that for a second, should an entrepreneur every single day be walking into the business and reassessing the price model that they've got. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's not something that you, you, you do it on a Monday and then a month later you come back. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with that because as you are starting out, you, you, the, I, you want to get to a point where you figure it out. You just align with the frequency of how things work. So if you just price it once and after three months, you can't get it right. You want to constantly review it. Why didn't that customer buy from me? Why are they moving like this? Why are they no longer buying as much as they used to? Or why am I not longer 
getting the same frequency or the, why am I having chaining customers? And as you do that, as you analyze that uh, modeling, you get to revise your pricing. What then is cost plus pricing? Cost plus price is, um, uh, I would say, is a price that you're selling at cost, right? But you, you just want to add a little bit just to, um, to make profit. But you're trying to operate as just above cost kind of thing. How do you work out that difference then just to add the little bit? I'm a data science and I would work it through data and based on what can I, what other expenses are there for me or I would put a brand value of my service on it. But most people just look at it and say, um, if I want to just survive above break even, this is the price that I would set up. Uh, for me, I would say it should be a, a cost below what the market is, but enough for you to survive and not feel the pressure. Now we look at something called penetration pricing. Mm -hmm. And I would say to you that the secret of success for any entrepreneur is customer growth. So at some point, you've got to set a price which is almost going to be a bait. It's going to be a lure. You bring them in, and then you can start the change model. What then is penetration pricing? You want to penetrate the market. You want to Quickly. begin it as much as yeah. possible. Um, so how you do that is um, the PEP and the, and the ShopRite, they, got, they always get this model right. I can't say ShopRite is cheaper. I can't say that because I know them. But market says they're cheaper. They save. So you, they come with this product and this pricing where they're just operating on a, it's like a break-even kind of price, costing, and the, the pricing. But and they will market that product or that basket of products very aggressively. Very aggressively. Which creates an aura around the rest of the products. Yes, and they make yeah. money through yeah. volumes. And sometimes they, they might not even make um, a lot of money on it, but they gain market share. And now, once you capture the, the public, you have it. The people won't think anymore. Mm -hmm. the, the, the milk in ShopRite and Pick and Pay and, and Woolworths, same price, 21 Rand, 21.75, What same thing. But because you have captured the market to say you save, everyone goes to you. And you've created that yes. perception yeah. Yeah. Of, of being reliable, cost-effective, and cheaper, yeah. which mm. is particularly these days is exactly what customers but want. But also you want yeah. to be, uh, I would say you want to be, you want to get in the market and provide value. You, you want to get in like how Woolies get in the market. You, uh, but they have a perception that they're expensive, but you want to get in there as a quality provider, but also very affordable, so that next time the customer doesn't think of price when they buy from you. All right, that's penetration pricing. Mm. Now we've got economy pricing. How, how does that work out? Uh, that's, you look at everyone else, how much they're charging for milk, fresh milk is 22 rand, and then you come in and you charge the same kind of thing. It's like market price. And then very critically, in conclusion, as, we, as we've worked our way through these strategies, uh, we ha you have to have dynamic pricing strategies to the point that it's, 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 going, to change, it's going to change constantly. Mm -hmm. The question, though, is what are you looking out for? You want to take the market as fastest way and you want to remain in a certain category that you own, whether you, are, you sell healthy or you sell quality or you provide quality analytics. And then also you want, to be, you want to sell value. You want to also be known for what you're doing. So as, it's, it's a combination of all of them, but you might leave some models, some of them out, the ones that you mentioned, like the economic pricing and the um, uh, cost plus selling kind of modeling. You might leave some of those out, but you just want to get this model that works for your segment for, for hours, yeah. Okay, final question now then. Um, your business itself, analytics advertising. You've sold me on the importance of data. How do you convince entrepreneurs that data is the bedrock of success? Here's, here's how it is, and I've seen this in the market. Uh, a lot of these entrepreneurs, they just assume their market is this one. If I ask you, who is buying your product, do you know them? No, the thing is, these type of people, they buy from us, they work like this. You know. um, a lot of them will say, no, a lot of our market is in the communities. So it's a vague profile. Vague profile. Mm. So you need to understand your customer and what they're doing. That's customer um, understanding and also kind of, uh, customer behavior. Kind of thing. Now, we come internally. Do you know which product is a champion product? Do you know which one is a chaining product? Which one hasn't been bought in the last six months? Do you know which one is a new product that is attracting mark people in the market. So the lesson I've got from our conversation today is twofold. One, 
you have to understand the customer who's coming in, and who's touching the yeah, product. Yeah. And the second thing is, don't just think that pricing is a one-off thing. It's a constant and a fluid dynamic, yeah. and you've got to keep evaluating Yeah, absolutely. Have I got it right? Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. there's different types of pricing, for example. Um, I can give an example with a car. Uh, the cars that are from zero to like 500,000, I would call them price fighter cars. They are entry level cars. And then the cars from 500 to like 1.5, I would say those are A brands, A brands. And then the ones from 1.5, I would say those are premium cars. So if you, are, if you are selling cars, which level are you in? You see now, if you now understand, then you know you're selling an entry level. You're selling entry level, how should you communicate with that customer? It's different. You can't sell an entry level product and you talk premium. You have explained a very complex subject in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. And for that, Telefani Banks, I thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Viewpoint. Thank you. Thank you so much.